Well, for whatever reason, uh, you have two monitors. I have my main one on my right and my secondary monitor on the left. You want to set up backgrounds for them. So you just go over here to personalize. You right click and say personalize. And you'll see a list of the uh, recent images. You click on the browser and you go to the directory where they're all stored. Now, they're normally stored in your Windows uh, slash web subdirectory. But you can choose any other location. That location is right protected, so you're going to need permissions to do that. So you can store this anywhere you want on your uh, hard drives. So as many people also know that you can select any one of these, and when you click on it, it'll automatically show up on both of your monitors. But lesser known is that you can have different images on different monitors. And to do that, you have your normal situation here where you click on an item. I'll do a, a different one here, and you'll see that they both show up. Both monitors show the same image, but if you right click on any of the images, you can apply it to an individual monitor so you have two different images showing. But that's uh, not uh, the end of it. If we change this to a slideshow and we have that directory there, you'll see that it changes the images uh, on each monitor. It'll throw up a different image and continue to do so. Uh, even though you have no selection here uh, to say monitor one and monitor two. As long as you set it up ahead of time and do it this way, you'll get different images. And all you have to do is wait for the timeout. So if you look at two images here being displayed, you watch the desktop change out only one of them. Now I've cut down the interval here just so we don't have to wait forever. But you'll see on the next change, it replaces the image on the right hand side and then it waits to the next change. But maybe you're one of those people that don't want to have a separate picture. You want to have one picture spanning both monitors. Now you can find just a nice high resolution picture that you like. You choose a drop down here. You notice that most of them don't work. But if you check span, it'll span both monitors, give you a nice image. Now it may be a little blurry or it may be chopped off a little bit uh, in one direction or another. Uh, but it can serve the purpose in some cases. Now there's a couple things you can do. You can do a search, uh, for example, I'm on Bing here, and I'm doing a, a search for 4K wallpapers. And that way you'll get a very high resolution image that will look nice when stretched across two different monitors. Uh, just go ahead and simply uh, choose one you want and use it. And for your personal use, you can use these images for the most part. Now, most of those can be stretched, but if you change and now search for, instead of just 4K, you can say dual monitor uh, or extra wide or whatever you want. And you'll find out that people have already made uh, some that are already made for dual monitor displays. Then, just as before, you simply uh, download it and put it in one of the directories that uh, you want to use. Now, I personally have created a separate directory for double wides. And I went out and found uh, uh, different images that I liked, a uh, nice black and white galaxy one here uh, in the space theme, for example, uh, or uh, other, th other things. Just uh, add that to your search criteria, and you'll get plenty of examples of double wides already created. And as you notice here, uh, the tree is offset a little bit, so it appears only on one screen. It's not split across two. Uh, you'll find some that do that well, some that don't. Uh, depends. Uh, you can also get images that are uh, widescreen but are set up for still having different images. Uh, like this one here, it appears to be one image. Looks great against the spanning of a monitor uh, like that. But it'll also appear uh, independent on both monitors. And let me uh, go back and uh, instead of doing uh, space or weird stuff, let me go back and do a, a different search uh, for something else. And or I'll just click on another one here. There's the nice uh, background. Now this one's going to be split the mountain down the middle. So you have to be selective on what you're going to actually use. So let's try a couple of those. If we uh, look here at the uh, desktops next to each other, and I go to that directory that I set up, uh, let me browse to it. And here's the images here. And if I select one of them, uh, there it is. It looks pretty good, uh, whether it's on a single monitor or uh, split against both of them, not like that. Uh, it makes a very nice background image. So if we select another one uh, and we see, yep, there's that tree, perfect uh, split between the monitors. Yeah, don't forget, if you use uh, a different setting here, uh, it's not going to work. So you have to use uh, that 
if you choose something else, you might get something like this, where it looks compressed to go on each monitor. So don't forget to put all your double wides in one directory and then point to it. Uh, that way you'll only get those. You can even add different categories, space, nature, whatever. Uh, as long as you point to that one subdirectory, uh, you'll be great. So what about those personal files, those personal pictures that don't quite fit, don't quite work? Well, the uh, good news is, is that Windows comes with several programs where you can edit that. So let's go out here and take a look and find some. Now, I made one here. I actually downloaded this. But uh, if you go find a particular picture, if, let me get back here to the web directory again and go here. I made one called Cats. And here's a, a cat picture I downloaded. Could be your personal cat. And you want to have it on your screen. Uh, so we go over here and we look at it. And you'll see here, I'm going to show here the sizes. I downloaded two sizes for demonstration purposes. So we go there and we uh, click on the picture. And sure enough, there it is. But across two monitors, you get the same picture repeated. Not a problem. So let's try some other options here to see if we can make it look better. Well, that doesn't work because of the uh, resolution of the picture, uh, the orientation, actually. Uh, so if I look here, I keep trying to have a dry span. Oh, that's better. Uh, Kitty got chopped off a little bit, but uh, just using that uh, may be successful in whatever picture you're using. Okay, so but I want it a little bit better, so uh, I'm going to go back in here and choose a different cat picture uh, that I have in that directory. If I go back here and choose this one up here, you'll see that it's stretched across, it's focused on the cat, it's a little bit zoomed in, uh, works really well. Well, how did I create that? Well, if you have a graphics program like Photoshop oh, and you're very well experienced in resizing canvases and picture sizes and all that, uh, you have no problem. You don't even need to watch this. You can figure this out yourself. Uh, but for those of us who are just using Windows and want to use the same tools that come with it, uh, here's how to use uh, one of the tools in Windows. Now, I'm using the Paint 3D that came with the new version of Windows only because it has good controls here. If you notice here, this shows a desktop. This original picture I downloaded or came from your phone in your case, <clears throat> I want to change the actual uh, the size of it. If I change that there and change that there, and now I see the actual resolution, the one that's going to fit my two monitors. Now, I did that by doubling the 1920 horizontal and leaving the vertical 1080 alone. Okay, but... Uh, so I put these new images in here, the new values, that is. And I say, oh, it's 3480 by, and now I want to leave it right there because we're going to trim it, but it's going to fit within that size. So I'm just going to say, OK, and there it is. So now I have this window I can just drag around to of the right size, and I can just drag around. See, now that won't work because the kitty's in the middle. Uh, so I want to drag this around until I see how it's going to appear on my monitor. Well, on both monitors. So if I go ahead and finish that, I say everything's OK. Uh, let me get it situated here. OK. And I, all I have to do is once I'm done is click on done. OK. And boom, there's my new image. So then you can save it in your personal, your double wide personal folder, however, wherever you want to save it at. And you put it there. And then we're just going to set Windows up to use it. So we go back to the desktop and to the uh, Background Manager, and we click here, and we select an image, and there it is. Looks pretty good, uh, correctly crop sized and cropped uh, for the dual monitors. By the way, if you use your phone in horizontal mode, you'll find out that they uh, do a really good job of taking high resolution pictures. You can do that. And uh, let's talk a second here about multiple uses of this. Right now, it's in double wide mode. Uh, that's great. Single mode is chopped off a little bit. But if you have something like a laptop, where you're only using your double wide occasion, you don't want to have to switch your images each time. Uh, believe it or not, if we look at it, yeah, see, it's not a bad picture in a single wide mode as well. So depending upon how you set this up, it'll work for all occasions. So grab some of those favorite family ones or download some double wides from the internet. Uh, go ahead and set it up so you can have a double wide slideshow uh, all with just a few steps. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.